Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. So in this week's video I'm going to do things a little differently. I'm going to use acrylic ink on my pastel matte paper to block in the black spots of this snow leopard first and then go over that with pastel. This way I can get my black spots in and I can go over with the pan pastel for my underlayer without having to worry about not seeing my uh, line art through the underlayer anymore to know where the black spots go. So the pan pastel will cover the black but normally I can still see through it. But this is the first time that I do this so bear with me and I hope that the normally does apply here and that it does show up otherwise this will be a pretty stupid video. But anyway, as you can see, I use the acrylic ink. You really don't need a lot because I I poured in a little bit right there with the little tool that's on top of the acrylic ink um, bottle. And it was already way too much because I think if I would have just like five drops or anything like that, it would be it would have been enough. But anyway, you don't need a lot if you want to do this technique, just so you know. So. As you can see, I'm blocking in the black spots and now I'm going to block in the fur layer as well. Because in between the white fur of the snow leopard, you can see a lot of darker hairs that are caused by the shadow that's underneath and in between the hairs. So that's why I am using my little pencil here, or, or paintbrush better, to block in all of these little hairs. Now, after this was done, I did go over with the pan pastel and maybe this layer wasn't so necessary. If I were to do this again, I probably wouldn't be blocking in all of those first strands in anymore. Because I still had to go over them with my black pencil to make them show up a little bit more and to mute some of them down because some of them were really black as I used a little bit too much of acrylic ink right there. So I wouldn't do this again, but I still would cover the black spots and the very black parts like in the ear and on the muzzle and the nose, things like that. Okay, so now I'm going over that with the pan pastel, as you can see. In difference to what you might think, a white snow leopard isn't just white. Because as you can see, I'm not using a lot of white here. I'm mostly using very light grey, blue, a little bit of brown, but it was a little bit too brown, so you'll see me go over that again in a second to mute it back down a little. And black. Those are the main colors that I used. I did use some green for the eyes as well and when the snow leopard is done or at least the under layer of the snow leopard is done I wanted to get in the background which I will try to get like a snowy scene background really really blurry so you can't see anything really but just white and a little bit of uh, contrast around the edges so the main focus goes to the snow leopard and then I wanted to do this with a white pan pastel but then I realized that it's much more cost effective and time effective if I just use a white pastel stick soft pastel stick that is and just use the pan pastel for the corners where I want to darken it up a little bit so after the background is done I'm using my pencils to go on top of the under layer and get in the details with the snow leopard with the fur and everything like that so as you can see I'm not using a lot of colors here the colors you see laying around there on the right side is not even all the colors that I used. I used only like six or seven different colors for the fur and then for the nose maybe two or three of those uh, reddish pink kind of colors. And that was about it. This one was done with like seven colors because of the underlayer was really vibrant enough and the colors in the underlayer were good enough so that I can just go over it for the details and I didn't have to tweak a lot in the underlayer. So that's what you see right here. I'm mostly using an ivory, a warmer ivory tone, something like that, to go on top of the underlayer first and that's my base layer for the fur. Then when the fur is lighter, like around the eyes, the little patches that you see right there, I use a white or an even lighter color. It's also like an ivory but it's a very light, light, light grey. So that's what I use for the highlighted parts or the lighter parts like the fur around his eyes. And then when the fur is a little darker or where there is a lot of shadow, I just go over that again with my very dark grey color to use and get in some fine hairs in between the first layer of fur so that it looks like there is some shadow falling through and you can see that the really denseness of the fur just like I did just about now above the eye. 
Then for the eye, there isn't really much to it, as it is already very black. I just go over with a bluish gray color to get in that highlight reflection that the sun or the snow costs on this snow leopard. Then for the nose, as you have seen just now, there isn't really much to it. I just used two or three different colors and then added some black on top of that to mute it back down and make it a little bit darker and add those black little spots on top of the nose. And for the rest, we're just repeating the same thing over and over again, because that's what this is, a lot of fur. And it's almost all in the same color tint, just little differences in highlights and shadows and a little bit darker or lighter at some parts. But mostly it's just that very ivory, light ivory color to get in the first layer, then going over with the very dark gray or the lighter ivory grayish color to get in the lighter and the darker parts of the fur. And of course my favorite thing, I blend this all out with my finger on top of the few layers of fur that I did there already just to soften it out and to make it a little less harsh. Now even when I did all the spots first with the acrylic ink, I still have to go over them with my black pastel pencil because when I blend things out and with the pan pastel as well, they got covered a little. But the great thing about this is because I did them in acrylic ink first, I now know where they are without having to search in my reference picture or my under layer and hoping that I can see the line art through. So now that makes it very easy to just go over the black spots again with the black pastel pencil and get it right in the first time without having to look and search and waste a lot of time on that. By the way, this one is a picture that I took at the Paradise Zoo where we live close near, like an hour and a half drive. And if you subscribe to my newsletter, which you can do through the link in the description below, you will get this one at the end of the month too, so that you can follow along with this tutorial if you would like to. If you don't like to and you would just like to make your own version of it, go ahead, but be sure to subscribe to, subscribe to my newsletter to get this picture at the end of the month though. As you can see, I started on the body already, which is just a big repeat of the things that we did on the face. The most part, I just used another color here, which is a warm gray color from the Stabilo Carbotello range as an underlayer for the first layer here of the fur. And then I adapt this again with the dark gray or the lighter ivory color to get in the highlighted parts, as you can see right now here on the top. That's the light ivory color that I'm talking about to get in the parts where they catch the most sun and the hairs reflect that. Then, as you will see in a minute, the bottom part is a little more in the shadow, which for I use the dark gray to get in some of those little hairs in between and make it a lot less vibrant and a little more shadowy feely, if that makes sense, if that's even a word. But anyway, we're just going to repeat that over and over again until we get the whole body covered. And we are going to watch out that we don't use the same straight robotic strokes all over the body. As you can see, I wiggle around the pencil in my hand and I wiggle it around on the paper as well so that I don't get the exact same lines. And it makes it all feel and look very natural and very flowy. Like there is some wind in between or something like that. Not just straight hairs like it's a cartoon. We want this to look realistic, or at least I want it to look realistic, so that's what you need to do for that. And then the last thing, but not least of course, is adding the whiskers, which I really really love. This makes the whole piece like tie together and come together, and it gives him that little cute cat feely. So I hope that you like this one, I hope you learned something, and that maybe you want to pick up the acrylic ink or acrylic paint just like that and try this out for yourself because I really recommend if you are doing a animal or a painting where you need a lot of dark black and you are going to cover it with a layer of pan pastel or soft pastel or anything like that it makes it really really easy to find your spots or black parts again after applying the under layer without having to search or without having to worry that you don't mess up your line art and that you can still see through it. So anyway, if you give this a try, let me know how it went in the comments below. If you want to give it a try or if you have another idea or something like that to make this happen without acrylic ink, let me know. I would love to learn more about that and I hope to see you again next week.